I wanted to just build this network of, of agents and, and just people on the team and everything. And then I started getting referrals out of state. And then it just, it just started spiraling from there. And I said, okay, you know, this, this is something here. The podcast now has this reach. People are hearing about me. People are learning about me saying, oh, you're a real estate agent. And now I have a whole page that's dedicated to that, like where you can go. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Mike Cavagioni, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Shelby and I are pumped to have you on. And this is going to be a great episode because we're taking this in a slightly different direction than normal because you're also a podcast host. So this episode is going to be for agents that have ever considered hosting their own podcast. We're going to do a deep dive on that, go into how your podcast, which you created first, now leads to referrals. And that's where Shelby's going to take away from the stats. But Mike, thank you so much for jumping on. I really, really appreciate you guys inviting me onto your show. And I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much. Dude, we're excited to have you here. Okay, stats. Real quick, Mike is out of Oahu in Hawaii. He is exclusively now a referral agent and started his podcast right around the same time that he got licensed. And since then, 80% of his closings have come from the podcast. And the podcast, which is the Average Joe Finances podcast, averages around 10 to 12 downloads per month. So my Thousand. question, oh, <laughs> what did I say? I said 12, 12 <laughs> he has 10 followers. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. I keep, I keep doing that. Dude, what was it yesterday yeah. I introduced someone and their closings was like 18 million. And I was like, oh, eight million. And he's like, eight you million. forgot 10 million, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> like, anyway, okay, Mike, yes. Yeah, 10 to 12,000 downloads per month. But before we dive into the podcast stuff, can you take us back a little bit in time, rewind a little bit? Why, why a podcast? Why your real estate license? What's that piece of the puzzle? Okay. Well, it all started way back when. No. Uh, so I actually started things off being a real estate investor, right? So at the time, I had just bought a duplex back, back in Chesapeake, Virginia. And I was going to my first real estate meetup in person. This was in February of 2020. And at the time, while I was there, this is this is for me getting my license. I was talking with other investors and and one of the guys approached me and said, Hey, Mike, you know, with the podcast you just started and everything else you have going on, why don't you consider getting your real estate license and, you know, figure this whole thing out? Actually, as a matter of fact, it was, it was a blog that I had. It wasn't even the podcast yet. The podcast didn't even come out until the end of June. But he's like, Hey, you've got reach. Why don't you just go ahead and get your license? He's like, I know you know people that are PCSing here. You know, obviously I was active duty military at the time. You know, people that are leaving. He's like, get your license, give those names to another agent on the team here, and you get 25% of the commission. I said, oh, that sounds like easy money. Okay. So I went and got my license. I went and took, a, took the 60-hour course. I went and uh, you know, took the test uh, a, a multiple number of times for the state exam. Got the, the national test first try. The state was, was sketchy because you know Hawaii, man, they, they've got some funny ways of wording their questions. So it kind of threw me off a bit. So it took me a couple of tries to get the state one down. But once I got it, I got the license and I started sending, hey, you know, I knew people that were coming here and they didn't want to live in base housing. So I'm like, hey, why don't you talk to this guy over here and they'll get you hooked up and put in a house. And next thing you know, I started getting like these checks. You know, I'm just like, okay, first one was like $4,000. Next one was like $5,000. Now, mind you, these are commissions in Hawaii, right? So Hawaii, the at median household price right now is over a million dollars, right? So I'm getting 25% of that commission. So some people might be like, that sounds like my whole commission. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's the market that I'm in, right? So the referrals were nice. And then after I started the podcast, you know, and I started getting a little more active as a real estate agent, I started actually taking on clients of my own while I was still active duty in the Navy. That was very difficult to do. Ali makes it look easy. Okay. It's not like that for everybody, but it was very difficult for me to, to make that happen. And I wound up kind of 
scaling back a bit and going back to being a referral agent after I retired because I felt like th- that was more lucrative for me, right? And I actually got this idea from Allie of building up my team as well. It's something else I'm doing separately as well, building up an average Joe finances team, similar to the way that you guys do your five pillars team. I, I just thought that was amazing. And I'm, I'm totally plagiarizing and copying you guys. So thank you. <laughs> but no, so like I, I wanted to just build this network of, of agents and, and just people on the team and everything. And then I started getting referrals out of state. You know, I got this referral out of Vegas and I was like, okay, that was cool. And then it just, it just started spiraling from there. And I said, okay, you know, this, this is something here. The podcast now has this reach. People are hearing about me. People are learning about me saying, oh, you're a real estate agent. And now I have a whole page that's dedicated to that, like where you can go. If you're in all 50 states, go in there, fill out the form. I'll get your info and I'll get you to an agent in that state. Somebody in my network that, that is trustworthy and good. And then if you have a problem with them, you let me know and I remove them from the network. No questions asked, right? So it is very much a reputation-based business as well. So that's, that's one of the things I want to point out to everybody is that reputation in this business is huge. So if you, totally. if you bring the wrong person on your team, it could really hurt you. That's why I make sure I vet people before they, they come into the network. Anyway, okay. so that started happening and you know, I started realizing how, how good this was and decided that I'm going to go back to being just a referral agent while I'm doing my, my other things on the side here with my podcast and also my post-production company and all that other stuff. So anyway, yeah. Sorry if I talk too much. Just tell me to shut up. I'm from New York. <laughs> No, not at all. That was a really good overview of like, you know, people are listening. They're like, he's got the podcast. He's got the referrals on lock, $5,000 of referral. Dude, by the way, my first year, my average sales price as I was closing my own deals was $155. And like after splits and everything, especially, you know, somewhere like $30,000 houses, I'm like drooling at your life. But okay, <laughs> we, we, We want to talk about this podcast as a way to generate business. So if agents are out there listening and they're like, dude, he's got this awesome podcast and it, you know, these people know him, like him, trust him. And these people reach out to him for business. I want that. So can you take us like big picture and then we're going to narrow it down, funnel it down into the tactical, but like the beginning steps of starting a podcast with the end goal of generating business from it. Oh, okay. Now you guys want all the secret sauce. I guess I guess I can give some of that out. So <clears throat> actually, you know, starting a podcast is the easy part. Actually conducting and maintaining the podcast is the hard part, as I think you guys are really, you know, as you do more of your own podcast, you're realizing yourself as well. It's it takes a lot to actually make it work, especially if you want to make it work from a, a business perspective. So for me, it didn't even start that way. I started it as a passion project. It was just something that a buddy of mine actually convinced me to do. He's like, hey, you started the blog. You know, you were talking about your financial independence journey and and what you're doing in real estate. You know, why don't you start a podcast? He kind of twisted my arm, you know, 360. And I said, okay, yeah, sure. Why not? And now I got to tell you, you know, I, I try to tell people to do it the right way because I did not start the right way. My first six months, I was getting so burnt out. I'm surprised I didn't quit. Uh, I I really thought I was going to. And about six months into it, I almost did. And that's when I learned to outsource and hire a team. And and they've been fantastic, right? Now I get to just record my content, upload it, boom. So that's that's the first thing I'm going to say is don't burn yourself out. But to get started, you have to figure out who are you talking to? Who's going to be your target audience? That's the very first question you should ask yourself, right? Who is going to be the person that I am quote unquote selling my business to, my business being my podcast. So the other piece of that is your podcast is a business. So treat it as such. If you're going to use your podcast to bring in leads, especially real estate referral leads, you want to treat it the same way you treat your real estate business, right? So anything that you do for your business, you want to do for your podcast, right? You're going to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Okay. If you have to build a team behind it, build a team behind it. If you need help, and you need to outsource, you outsource, right? Do the things that you're good at, outsource the things that you're not so good at, right? The who, not how of it. So that's going to be the, the very first thing. Who's my audience and who's my team, right? How am I going to put this together? You can do it yourself, certainly, 100%. It definitely gets a little bit more difficult if you do everything yourself. So like I said, I started off doing everything myself. It sucked, but I digress. 
as, as you build and develop everything, you want to start to put together your content. You want to start recording your shows. You don't want to just release the podcast right away like I did, because then you release a podcast and you're like, okay, I want to be set on a schedule, but I have no more content. Now you're scrambling. And now the products that you're putting out isn't 100% of what you want to give. And a lot of times, it doesn't have to be 100%. If you can get to 80%, you're good, right? You don't have to kill yourself to make a you know, a perfect production. There's so many like huge podcasts out there that if you listen to it, like they're unedited and it's like, you know, why does, why does this person have such a large audience? It's, it's the reach that they have. So don't get discouraged by that. Right. So the thing is have an 80% solution, but when it comes to recording your content, have a store of content put together, have at least five episodes out. If you're releasing a weekly episode, I do bi-weekly episodes, so my goal is to make sure I always have at least 10 episodes ready to go at any given time. As a matter of fact, right now, I have three months worth of content recorded at any given time, right? That's, to me, that's what's important because I know if I need to step away and take a break, I can do that because I've been there where I was burnt yeah. out before and I don't want to get to that point again. Yeah. Now, again, and I that- treat this as a business, okay. right? So I use my podcast as a way to generate these referrals by bringing on people that my target audience can know, like, and relate to, right? It's not just me. It's the people that I bring on the show. So that's another thing that's important as well. If you're doing interviews, you want to bring the right guests for your target audience, right? And I'm sorry, Ali, you were were jumping in on something. So I'll, I'll stop. Yeah. So I'm thinking about it from the agent, like an agent's perspective of them wanting referrals. So Sure. Podcasts, podcasts are the new radio, right? Like no one, well, I'm sure some people still listen to the radio, but podcasts are the new thing and they've been the new thing and they're probably going to stay this way for quite some time. That and YouTube, which if you're a podcast, you can just upload onto YouTube. How about, I mean, your podcast is very specific where, where specific, but not where you're talking about real estate investing. So it's not market specific but it is a specific type of audience sure. that you're attracting. What about the typical uh, agent that might not be into investing? They're like, yeah, you know, like not, not for me. That's not the audience that I want. The audience that they want is, is maybe local. Like, Hey, they're the, they're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and they want to get more referrals just in Fayetteville. You know, how would you suggest as far as guests go? Do they bring in guests? Should they not? Should it be more of market updates? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So if, if it's going to be specific and again, we're, we're talking about a target audience, right? If your target audience is going to be specifically, you know, Fayetteville, North Carolina, right. Or wherever it is that you're doing your business. Did I say Fayetteville, Arkansas? I was totally thinking of Little Rock. Anyway, I had like multiple States in my head. I was like, which one do I pick? Yes, I just combine them. Dude, I, <laughs> it's okay. I, I think I, it, I fixed it's, a, it. it's a place. I'm pretty sure Fayetteville, Arkansas is a place. I'm actually going to Google is. it. You guys keep going. I'm going to Google it and let you know. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Awesome. So <laughs> you, you can, you can get hyper local and hyper specific, right? When I talk about podcasting, I talk about being in a specific niche, right? So knowing what your niche is and knowing who your target audience is in that niche. So if your niche is going to be hyper local and you want to talk about just, you know, a specific area and you're going to do market updates and things like that, that's fantastic because now you are focused on that specific area. Your show is geared for people that live there. The only thing you have to worry about now is how do I get my show to that audience, right? So what I would say is, again, you're going to treat this like a business. So what would you do to get your podcast? Uh, it will, actually, what would you do as a real estate agent to let people know that you're a real estate agent in that area, right? You would run ads. You would join local Facebook groups or different different forums and things in that area. Introduce yourself. You can do the same thing with your podcast. I don't like running ads with the podcast. I've only done it a couple of times. I might start doing it more just depending on, on how things go. However, in this specific situation, when you're trying to be hyper-local in a specific area, running ads in that area is definitely okay. Because again... Your podcast itself is also an ad. So if you're paying to run ads for your podcast to get more listeners, you want those listeners to be in that market that you're targeting. You don't want somebody that's in Ventura, California, listening to your podcast about the real estate market in 
Fayetteville, Arkansas, or North North Carolina, right? So you want to make sure <laughs> that you're getting that target audience. So that th those are some of the ways to do it, right? Facebook groups is a huge underrated way, right? And a lot of times, a lot of these groups don't want you posting personal links or anything like that. My recommendation is, you reach out to the moderators and the admins in those group and you say, hey, you know, this group, we talk about the real estate market here, uh, you know, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. So what we want to do now is, you know, maybe bring you on the podcast and talk about your experience using this Facebook group and why you started this group to, to target this area or why you started this group to share information about the market in this area. And then you bring those admins on your podcast, right? And they're going to be like, you, you say, hey, can I share this in your group? They're not going to say no, of course. That's like, they're getting to be on your show and you get to share it in their group. That's awesome. Dude, that is so smart. I just took a note of that because, you know, Allie, we're going to fucking my, do my that. Sorry, my daughter just walked in. <laughs> Oh, no, don't be at all. Also, by the way, Fayetteville, Arkansas is real. Allie, you did not make that up. <laughs> Gee, you did a great job. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, well, hey, dude, this is there we go. That's that's huge then, you know, because now now I know more. Now you can target Fayetteville, Arkansas and Fayetteville, North Carolina at the same time. You totally could. Although, dude, I, totally different markets, so, but. I, okay, I love the target audience thing. I think that most people, I think they get that. You know, I'm trying to think from a listener's perspective, what's the parts that we need to dig well, into? But it's and like, that's, it's that's the thing, Shelby. What mm -hmm. I'm trying to say is like, you want to treat your podcast the same way you're going to treat your business, right? right? That's that's the biggest thing. Like people just look at, they look at their podcast like, oh, it's it's just a podcast. No, it's not just a podcast. It is an actual business and you have to treat it as such. Right. And actually, before Ali and I started this podcast, we did a pretty thorough avatar of who we thought our listeners were going to be. So if anyone out there is listening and wants an example of that, hit up Ali or and I and we can send you a copy of what an avatar might look like when it was built out. But what I was saying is like, I think from an agent perspective, the target audience, we understand that piece. But let's say you're starting a podcast today. I don't even know what step one would be in regards to the technical background. What platforms do you recommend? Any equipment? Like, like, can you just talk us through like the technical pieces? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. Absolutely. So uh, the, the first thing I was talking about, you know, is is figuring out who your target audience is, right? That's great. You know, everybody knows that that's what you need to do, right? Now, when it comes to actually starting the podcast, you figured that out, you're ready to go. Now it's like, okay, what microphone do I use? What kind of headset do I need? All those things. You don't need to get super crazy. I started my podcast off with something called a Blue Yeti. It's like a $100 microphone uh, that I got at Best Buy. You plug it in, it's a USB plug-in, it worked just fine. You know, I talked with other people that use their AirPods to start their podcast. That's another thing you can do as well. So the thing is, it's don't get hung up on the technicality of it if you're just looking to, to get started, right? You can grow and, and upgrade your equipment as you go. But there's people that record podcasts strictly on their phone. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to do just an audio podcast? Or do you also want to do videos and upload this to YouTube and other things as well? Like Spotify has video podcasts. Now you can go to a podcast and if they have a video of that podcast, you could watch the video instead of just listening to the audio, right? So you have to ask yourself, how do you want your podcast to be? And then that's the direction you can take it. Now, as you get further along, you can upgrade. Like I switched over. I, I bought a Rodecaster Pro and I got my, my XLR microphone, right? So I can plug it into this interface that makes my audio sound a lot better and a lot more crisper than the Blue Yeti did, right? And it doesn't pick up all the surround, surround noise and things like that. But there's also other things you can use like software and stuff that can help you with that as well. I will give you this one website that has been extremely helpful for me. It's called appsumo.com. And you got to be careful there because you could wind up spending a whole bunch of money on apps and software before you even know it. So go there with a specific mission in mind and figure out what's going to work for you. But there's so many great tools there that you can use, especially as a podcaster, to help you with your show. 
I, I got my email list through there. So like what I use to send out my emails is something called SendFox. I absolutely love it. I, I, I pay like a one lifetime fee and I can have up to 26,000 emails on that list. It's pretty awesome. There's another thing that I use called... Uh, well, I don't really use it anymore. It's called TidyCal. I started with that. Now I use Calendly. But TidyCal, you pay one time and you never have to use it again. It's a scheduler, right? So you want you can use something like that to schedule guests on your show. The other thing that I use, and this one's pretty neat, is called King Sumo. And this is, I've used this to do giveaways. I'll give away like an Amazon gift card or a book. And I do these little things for the podcast and it generates a buzz, right? And it gets people, you know, talking about your show, talking about the giveaway that you're doing. You can build your email list that way. So that's, that's a couple pieces of software you can use. Now, if you're going to do everything yourself too, there's some actual software you can download that will help you with the backend editing and things like that. So one of the things that me and my team use is something called Descript. Uh, Descript is phenomenal. And it can actually transcribe your entire episode for you. You can pull up the video and the audio at the same time. You can cut pieces out. You can set it up to where it will automatically remove the uhs and the ums or any repetitive words. So you can do that. The only thing that I will say is, and this is with any AI program, is that you need that human touch to go back and make sure that it did it right, right? You want to make sure that it didn't cut off too much. So sometimes I've used it and I'm like, okay, cool. This is really good. And I just, and what, this is what I was doing it myself. And I just upload the episode and then I realized it cut off more than just my uhs and ums. And I'm all of a sudden, I'm, I'm having these like incomplete sentences and I'm like, oh my God, I got to replace the audio file on this podcast episode ASAP. Right. So again, just be careful with the different things you use, but there's so many different pieces of software you can use. Actually, I can totally. Pull up. So I, to recap real quick. Sure. So, sure, sure, sure. So it sounds like there are, you know, at, at a minimum, you have to decide whether you want to do video or audio. And depending on that, mm -hmm. you absolutely you it's either the mic, the camera, the lighting, all of that stuff. But it sounds like you can just totally upgrade as you go. Because I know a lot of people might be listening and they're like, oh, I need to get the camera. I need to do all these things. So would you recommend getting in the reps first and then upgrading down the road? Or how important do you think it is for people to have all that stuff up front? It depends how badly you want to start versus how badly do you want it to be quote unquote perfect, right? For me, I just wanted to get started. I was using the webcam on my laptop and this Blue Yeti microphone. I eventually upgraded, right? Uh, now I have a 4K camera that I use. It's also a webcam, but it's a 4K camera. It's, uh, for those that are interested, it's called Allura Tech. I got it at Best Buy. Great camera, great webcam. And then I eventually upgraded. So it, it just depends on, on what your goals are as a podcaster. Do you want to get out there and start generating content and start generating a buzz around your business? Or do you want to wait till you have everything perfectly set? Either way works. It just depends on how soon do you want to start with what you have. With you know, you might have equipment right now that you can use to start a podcast today. It just might not be the best sounding, you know. So that, that's another thing you want to think about as well. Uh, there are ways to get around the sound. I know that that kind of rhymes, right? I like that. But there are ways to get around the sound, right? So if you put yourself in a quiet room. Uh, somewhere where it's not going to echo too much, like any USB microphone will be fine, right? Even your AirPods will be fine. The only thing that I say with AirPods, you have to be careful. When you raise your voice a little bit too much, it will it will actually like crackle and, and make it sound kind of distorted. So you got to be careful with that. But I do have this, this 20 steps to launch a successful podcast, right? And if you want, I can go through this list with you guys really quick. That we way want. it's a little bit more structured <laughs> and I'm not all over the place rambling like I do. <laughs> Dude, you read our minds. Also, can we have a copy of this to upload into theagentgoldmine.com by chance? Sure, absolutely. Yes. It was, it was really funny when you're like, no, Shelby <laughs> on the spot. I, I thought like, about oh. saying that jokingly, but then I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But, <laughs> okay. Yes. Or, yes, we would love for you to go through it. Yes. Alex. Yes. And yes. right before you do, uh, a quick question on length, right? Because I, I feel like length is a common question. So we kind of went over well, a little bit of like the platforms and how you use a lot of websites, AI to like to track and to generate buzz. I'm going to look into this King Sumo thing for some giveaways. Um, we went into technical, like just like, equipment. 
And I feel like usually when, when you know, as a person, like as a listener right now, you know, if you're one of those that just like want to immediately start and it sounds like trash. And then you also know if you're the opposite person, it's like, no, I need everything to be perfect before I do it. So like, go in the middle, <laughs> you like meet somewhere in the middle and start at the time where it doesn't sound like trash, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, I probably sound like trash right now. I like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah. okay, no, so I, like, I like that. I your, like that. You don't want to sound like trash. Yeah. What What are your thoughts on on length? On links? Length. How long should each podcast be? Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. Tag us. We'll reshare that. Length. How long should each podcast be? Oh, length, length, length. Okay, it sounded like yeah. length. I'm sorry. Yeah, so length, it, it depends. So you have to think trash. about your audience. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with length, you want to think about your audience's attention span, right? Who is listening to your podcast? Are they listening to it while they're commuting? Are they listening to it while they're working out? So generally, I say, you know, between 30 minutes to an hour, uh, try not to go over an hour. I've had record, I've had interviews with people that, that have gone on for three hours. And what I did is I just split it into three episodes, right? Uh, you know, part one, part two, part three. Nobody's going to sit there and listen to a podcast for three hours unless it's like about Dungeons and Dragons and you're really into that, right? Uh, it's just it's just not going to happen. So, you know, think about when people are listening to your show, okay? Are they listening to it when they drive? Are they listening to it when they work at whatever, whatever it may be, right? So like for me, I listen to podcasts when I'm driving, whenever I'm in my car. And usually I live in Hawaii on an island, right? Usually wherever I'm going isn't too far, but thanks to traffic, which we have a lot of, sometimes I'll be in the car for 30 minutes to an hour, depending on where I'm going. I always have a podcast on, right? My kids hate it. Um, they always beg me to put on music and sometimes I'll cave and put on music, but that's what I listen to in my car, right? So for me, that's when I get my podcast time in and my list is ridiculously huge. I can never get to all the podcasts that I listen to. Uh, and now I'm adding this one to my list. So. You know, that's just one more thing that I got to add in now that's going to make it harder to listen to all my podcasts. So thank you guys for that. But yeah, so length, I would say between 30 minutes to an hour. For me, I record my interviews and I always record between 30 to 45 minutes of recording, uh, sometimes a little bit longer. I think my average episode length is 43, 44 minutes uh, was the last thing I saw on uh, pod page. I'm sorry, uh, Ooh, pod, pod chaser. Yeah. So of that time frame, 45-ish minutes, how much do you go back into like their story and, you know, the inspirational and the motivational or how much are you tactical takeaways for your listeners? This isn't a selfish question at all. I don't, you know, this is for... <laughs> no, I, I love that. I that's that's great. Yeah. Selfish questions are what you get to do as a podcast host. And I do the same thing. So for me, what I like to do and what I used to do was I would go into someone's bio, I'd read their whole bio and background. And then I would ask them, Hey, tell us more about your background. And basically it was like the same thing over and over again. I'm like, what am I doing here? So now what I do is I provide, you know, some information on the guest in the show notes, right? I don't need to sit here and read their whole bio. I just start off things saying, Hey, you know, if you could tell us about yourself, tell us your story, you know, who is so-and-so like, and I say, you know, their name and they go into their story and their background. But one of the things I talked to them about before we hit record is, hey, I'm going to gear this podcast in whatever direction you want to go as the guest because you're here on my show to sell yourself, right? You're here to promote yourself. That's what podcasts, you know, people as a guest on a podcast are doing. They want to sell themselves. So I'm like, okay, so where, you know, what topics do you want to discuss? Where do you want to gear this? And then that's where we're going to go. And then the other thing I do is as we're going, I just start taking down a whole bunch of notes, right? And if they say something I want to come back to, I'll come back to it. I try not to interrupt them. Sometimes I will if it's something I want to jump into right away. But I let them go into their whole background story. And I tell them, look, go as far back as you want and go as or share as little as you want. It's only backfired on me once where I had one episode where like the entire podcast is just him talking about his story. And I think I asked him like two questions. Until like the end, oh it was gosh. it was insane. I'm like, oh my god! What dude. was the viewer? Uh, and I, and I tried to jump long? in, and and this guy was just he was just going hard, and I'm like, oh, okay. So, um, do you know? <laughs> but anyway, that, that's the only time that ever happened. So for the most part, do you know how you know, just gear it in that, that direction. Podcast? Hello. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like raising my hands. How long did people listen to that podcast? I'm very curious. 
Like, did people drop off? You know, I, I'd have to, I'd have to go back and look at that. I don't. I that was probably one of the least performing episodes, honestly. Okay. So I probably okay. should have re-recorded it or cut it, cut it up a bit more or just not even aired it. But you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, less lesson learned, right? So again, so where where was I going? Yeah, so you after I have them introduce themselves, you know, I, I take down notes and and then I have like these different topics we're going to talk about. And I, and I I tell you guys this because I used to have this entire script with questions, everything. I was like, I have to follow this script line by line by line. And it sounded so robotic and so unenthusiastic. And it just wasn't fun for me. And if it wasn't fun for me, I know it wasn't fun for the people listening. They were like, okay, dude, this is just like an interrogation. It's not an interview. So I said, I, I got to change things up. And I, and I did. I, I said, throw away the questions on the script. The only questions I ask now is that first question. And then the final four questions I ask everybody that comes on the show. Everything in between is just a conversation between me and that guest. And that's it. And I've, I've found that since doing that, it's a lot more fun for me. But also, I'm able to pull out a lot more information and golden nuggets from that guest. Because now I'm asking them the questions I want to ask. Because now it's just a conversation. Like I had the, the CEO and founder of the American Gold Exchange on my podcast recently. And I just started like asking, like, hey, dude, like, what about this? What about that? What about this? Just the stuff that I wanted to know. And it was just so interesting. And I had such a great exchange with them. And by doing it that way, your podcast will just flow so much better, sound so much more natural, and it'll be something that people want to listen to, right? Wow. Okay. We are recording on Riverside and uh, you yep. record on Zoom and there are a bunch of different like platforms where you can record. One of them that I recorded once on, not for this podcast, was like a YouTube live where I don't, maybe you know how to do the back end stuff of this, but it was, it was pushed, it was connected to my personal YouTube channel and on theirs. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you would recommend others do? I was like, oh, this is so cool for my 132 less subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> Take it from there. Well, you're Go talking ahead. about just live streaming it, right? To YouTube and stuff. I've seen people yeah. do that. Like I have StreamYard, I pay for it and I like never use it. I think I went live on it once in the two years that I've been paying for it, which is ridiculous. But StreamYard is a way to go live on all your social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. And it, they have right now in beta something similar to Riverside where it records locally. So even after you're done with the live recording, it will take those files, record it locally on each computer, and then upload it to the cloud. And then you can take that and turn it into whatever you want to turn it into. So I know plenty of people that will have like these live streams webinars, all different types of things. And then they'll take those recordings and turn it into a podcast, right? So it just depends on, on you know, do you want it to be a live show or do you want to have like a set schedule when you're releasing it? But I know people that have set schedules of when they go live, you know, it does make it more difficult for your guests if they have, you know, strict timelines when they can record or not. Like with me being in Hawaii versus on the East Coast, I mean, that's a six hour time difference. So sometimes it gets very difficult to be able to get on certain shows, especially if it's a live show. Awesome. Okay. Sorry. We, I feel like we've digressed so much from what you were, the, t the list of 10, which we're going to have on theagentgoldmine.com. So I want to do like a brief overview on this. And that way, like just like the highlights of this, so people can dig into it at their own pace for yep. more details. So what's like the, what's the brief, what's the skinny? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. Okay. So it's 20 steps and I'll just, I'll just go through them all really quick. Okay. Step one is going to be pick a podcast name and create a cover art and logo. Okay. That's going to be the first thing you want to do there. And there's other resources you can use to do that. If you're not good with Canva or anything like that, I recommend going to like Fiverr or Upwork and hiring a freelancer to make you your podcast artwork. Step two, set up a Gmail account in the podcast's name, just whatever the podcast is going to be, and then add pod at the end. And then you just use that to set up your YouTube channel, find the podcast hosting site that you want to use. I personally use Buzzsprout. There's other great ones out there like Podbean. 
Uh, I started with Anchor, which was free. Now it's called Spotify Podcast Studio or something like that. But free is my favorite price, so you can use that one as well. Step three, you want to set up social media for that podcast, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, a Facebook page, or a group. And I definitely recommend starting a Facebook group. Step four is creating that scheduling link that we talked about. So Tidy Cal was the one from AppSumo. I personally use Calendly, right? Those are things you can use. Step five is creating a newsletter for your uh, with, with a CRM, right? Using some type of customer relations management system. So for me, I use SendFox, like I said, off of AppSumo to build my email list. And there's different CRMs you can use like HiveMind or Asana. There's, there's different ones you can use that'll work for the podcast. Step six is organizing your actual files for the podcast. And I use a Google Drive and you can separate it into three different folders. I have episodes, show notes, and artwork because I do a different piece of artwork for each episode. Step seven, set up a social media calendar. So when are you going to post different things about your podcast? Are you going to post audiograms, social media caption videos, different things like that? If you're going to do that, schedule it, right? Step eight, set up some type of page with links, right? So link tree or flow page. I use flow page myself, but that way you can have all of your links in one place. And when people ask about your stuff, you can be like, oh, here, here's all my links. And you can just give them a quick, uh, a quick link to get to everything. Step nine, select a theme song for your podcast if you want to have a theme song, right? So if you want to have any type of intro music, outro music, or music playing in the background, this is when you want to do that. I also recommend you can get that created on Fiverr. Make sure you get you know, somebody that knows how to do copyright, copyright free music. I have had music before in the past for my own podcast that had copyrighted material. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Hey, why are all my YouTube videos, the intros and outros? It's just, there's no sound. And that's why. So I had to go and replace all that. Step 10, get a pre-interview or an intake form. Okay. I use JotForm. Uh, I, I believe I sent you guys the exact form that I use as well. Uh, for me, I, I like that because I could put everything, I could find out everything I need on my guest through that. And then I also give my team access to my JotForm account. So they get all that data as well. So I don't even have to send them anything. They get the bio, they get the headshots. I don't have to do anything. It's great. Uh, step 11, you, if you want to have your own website, buy a podcast domain name, uh, buy a domain name for your podcast, and then have it forwarded to whatever hosting site that your podcast provides. Um, I use PodPage. If you guys don't know what that is, it's podpage.com. It's great. They, you can actually have your own personalized podcast website on there. And it's, it's really decently priced and they have really great formats and templates for you to use. Step 12, record the trailer for your podcast, telling people what they can expect from your show. Then step 13 is going to be record your first episode and celebrate, go grab a drink, have a good time because you just recorded your first podcast episode. Step 14, start recording more episodes till you get a number that you're comfortable with to launch. Usually three to five episodes are recommended for your initial launch. Step 15 is you're going to be promoting your trailer on social media and announcing your podcast's initial release date. Okay, so you're going to be sharing it in Facebook groups, wherever you are. You're going to do this for about a month, about 30 days. Maybe consider doing one of those giveaways that I talked about with King Sumo. Then if you also need help scheduling this stuff on social media, there's a, an app also on AppSumo that I recommend called Postly. You can use that to schedule all of your social media posts. Step 16, send out requests to be on other podcasts. Being a guest on other podcasts is a fantastic way to help you promote your new or already established podcast. Step 17, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there, okay? Step 17, join groups that are in the niche of your podcast and start to interact without sharing your podcast, okay? You just want to start connecting with people. Don't start talking about your podcast yet, but you want to make sure you're building these genuine connections. Step 18, join my free podcasting group and introduce yourself. It's called Grow Your Podcast Tips. It's on Facebook. Go check it out. Step 19 is actually launch day. This is where you want to have at least a buffer of five episodes if you plan to release a weekly podcast. If you're doing more than that, have more. If you're doing less, I still recommend five. Uh, share your link to all your, your social media accounts and let everyone know. Shout it from the rooftops. This is a huge deal. You just started your podcast. Step 20, as you were building your email guest list, email every single guest that you've had on the show and anybody else that joined your email list and say, hey... 
we are releasing the podcast. Come check it out. And then whenever you release your podcast episode, email that guest and give them all the materials so that they can share it on their end as well. And that's going to help you grow your audience, right? You don't want to be the only person talking about your podcast. You want your guests to also be say, hey, I was on this show and it was phenomenal. Go check it out. You know, so give them all the resources they need for that. The thumbnails, the caption videos, the audiograms, all that good stuff. And I'm going to catch my breath now because that's all 20 steps. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> yeah. So if you want even more detail, this will be uploaded to the agentgoldmine.com. Mike, thank you so much for, for going over that. Cause I know that I feel like podcasts are like the new hot thing. They're not new by the way. And they've been around forever, obviously. But one thing that we haven't touched on uh, is the budget and how to leverage this. So how, when people are deciding, you know, if, if this inspires anybody to start their podcast, how much should they be looking at paying somebody? And what's like the one best question, if you can narrow it down to one question that, you, that they should be asking a VA to see if they're good? Sure. So, you know, I, I would say that the number one thing you should ask yourself is how much are you willing to spend on your podcast, right? So for me, at the beginning, I wasn't willing to spend pretty much anything. And I was doing everything myself and it was kicking my butt. Then I decided, well, you know what? I'll spend money once I monetize the show. And well, that wasn't going to happen because I wasn't getting enough downloads. So once I outsourced, that's when I started to notice this increase because I was able to market my podcast more. And I started paying for it myself. So I was paying around, I was paying a couple hundred dollars a month, right? To get my podcast edited uh, and all of that. And I was able to focus more on sharing it and marketing it. And I, I just saw my, in, my downloads start to increase and, and explode over the next couple months to the point where... I started doing some affiliate marketing as well. So I had, you know, I, I got some affiliate links and I started talking about it a little bit. Like I would throw like little ads in the show and I started making money. And I'm like, oh, now the podcast is making money. And then I was also a financial coach. I started getting fi uh, financial coaching clients through it. And then I got my real estate license and I'm like, okay, so, you know, let me start talking about that too. I started getting referrals for my real uh, for real estate. And I'm like, okay, now it's making money. Then I started to put a little bit more money into it. Then I hired a complete team to do everything for me. Now, one of the things I'll recommend, because you had mentioned VA, if you're going to use a VA to edit your podcast, I recommend going to a website like upwork.com and creating the actual job list that you want them to do and upload it and say, hey, this is, you know, this is how the podcast is structured. This is how I want everything done. And then let people apply and come to you. And when they come to you, then you could vet them and weed them out. And I recommend you interview the, your top four or five and treat it just like you're hiring an employee for your business, right? Then when you find the right person for your team, you bring them in, let them do their thing, and it's great. Or you can use uh, you know, an established team like my team, you know, shameless plug here, edipods.com. You can check that out. Uh, and I have a whole team that, that helps podcasters as well. But either way is going to work as long as you hire the right person that fits your business. Totally. Okay. That's super helpful. And I'm really excited to dig more into what you're going to put on the agentgoldmine.com as the, the 20 tips. And also, do you, do you have a duty description by chance? For virtual assistant, like what they could do or no? Uh, I, I do. I, I, I can probably You're put like that together and, and give that to you guys as well. I can give you like exactly okay. what I use for my VA. No, it's but okay. Mine, Just mine hire him, guys. Different. <laughs> mine was a little bit different because I was looking to hire somebody to grow with me as I grew the show and grew the business. And they actually help me run my podcast editing business now. They are absolutely amazing. They actually train all the other editors that we have. So my VA is phenomenal. You're probably not going to find one as good as mine because I'm, I'm just blessed there. And I got to tell you though, so I, I will let you know this real quick. If you hire a VA and it's not working out, do not be afraid to fire them right away. Okay. The first VA, VA I hired, it was a nightmare. Things were not going well. They wanted me to prepay and all this other stuff. And their, the work quality just was not there. I had to, you know, I definitely had to let her go. But don't be afraid to, to let somebody go or to say no if they're not the right fit for your business. Don't feel pressured into anything, okay? You will find the right person. It might take you a couple of tries. For me, it was on that second try when I, when I hired the person that I actually went out and 
created the job and let them come to me. The first person I hired was somebody who pitched me and I said, yeah, you sound great. Let's do it. Okay. And I got lucky that the first time I created the job and had somebody come to me that I found the right person. I know other people that it took them more than one try, right? So don't get discouraged. You will find the right person as long as you keep pursuing it. Just like in real estate, right? You're going to, you know, you'll find the client, you'll find the contract if you keep pursuing and, and taking action. Mike, this has been so helpful. There are so, you rattled off like at least 20 different websites, 20 different apps there, which we will all have in the description and, you know, on the YouTube channel description. So you can find it in the show notes. I know that he rattled off a lot. Thank you so much for all of your help with this. Before we head to the wrap up questions, what are some last like parting words that you have for, for anybody looking to start a podcast or improve their current one? Yeah. If you're looking to start or improve, you know, I would say the number one thing is get around people that are already doing it, right? You know, start talking to other podcasters, find out what works for them, what's, what's working for them, what's not working for them and formulate your own plan on what you believe is going to work best for you. And then look, trial and error is okay. You know, when I first started my podcast, it was really tough and I, I was really getting down and out until I realized, and this is another thing too, that the 20 to 40 downloads a month I was getting when I first started, I thought about it for a second. I'm like, you know, and actually somebody actually helped me put this into perspective, but 20 to 40 people in a room listening to me talk is like me teaching a class. So I said, okay, that's the perspective I need to look at it now. I'm, I'm providing this, you know, financial literacy and financial education through my podcast. And now I've got a classroom of people. And that's when kind of like my mentality shifted at, into uh, what it is now. And still, even with the amount of downloads that I get now, I still treat it the same way that I'm trying to provide value to the people that are listening to the podcast. So as long as you are genuine and you are really, truly trying to provide value to the people that are listening to your show, you're, you're going to do fine. I think that's really helpful perspective. And Sam Caudill, who is also on a, he, he does YouTube, but said something similar where it's like, you know, some people with, even, even if it's like four people who watched a video or listened to a podcast, that's four more people that you didn't have to, you know, cold call and get told off on the phone or, you know, <laughs> spend X amount of money. You know, there's just like a bunch of yeah. different scenarios. So it's like the, the perspective of gratitude as opposed to, oh, you know, woe is me. So I love that we're ending on that note. And now we're, we're heading into the wrap-up question. So what is your favorite app or tool? My favorite app or tool? Uh, honestly, right now, I would say Slack because Slack's been amazing for communication for me and my team. It's integrated with my Google Drive. It's integrated with Asana. So like everything that I use it for, I could just go to one place and I have everything at my fingertips. So Slack's been great because I could have it on my laptop. I could have it on my phone. I could have it on my tablet. Whatever I'm using at the time, I could pull it up and make sure that I'm always in the conversation I need to be in. Nice. And you and I met at uh, a conference. So I want to ask what other... And you were actually teaching the course on how to start a podcast. So that was also very helpful. I definitely made sure to make it to that one. What events are you going to this year? Honestly, uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. I, I think for 2023, I'm done. I think I'm going to start looking at what 2024 is going to be. I definitely want to make it out to PodFest one of these days. Uh, I definitely need to make it out to FinCon. And uh, I'm hoping to go to BPCon next year as well. I don't think I'm going to make it this year uh, in October. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like A lot of things are up in the air because one of the things we didn't talk about earlier is I did just take on a new job. And that's going to be taking up a lot of my time. And another reason why I went back to being just a referral agent is because I'm going to be working full time now uh, with with a job that I kind of couldn't say no to because it was, it was really lucrative and and good. So, gotcha, totally. Okay, how can we or listeners help you in your business? Uh, honestly, if you would just go give my podcast a listen and, and check it out. And if you like it, subscribe, that would be phenomenal. Maybe leave a review. Uh, but before you do that, make sure you leave this podcast a review because Shelby and Allie are just awesome. And I'm, I'm super stoked that I got to be on your show. So, uh, but that would be super helpful for me if you would just check it out. Average Joe Finances. Oh, yes, yeah. I was Perfect. about to say that. Yeah. Average Joe finances, go subscribe and listen because you you make finances as 
easy to understand um, and investing. That's your that's your niche. So if you haven't heard of that podcast, please go check it out. Subscribe. And if you uh, want to hang with us, we're Ali the Agent on Instagram and we're The Shelby Show on Instagram. Do you have Instagram as your preferred method of communication or how else can people get a hold of you if they want to ask you more podcasting questions, hit you up about editpods.com, all the things. Yeah. So I'm on pretty much every single platform for social media. Uh, I'm on threads now too, because that's the new thing. Uh, but everything yeah. is pretty much at Mike Cavagioni, M-I-K-E-C-A-V-A-G-G-I-O-N-I. -I. It's a long name, I know, Italian, 11, 11 letters, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you can find me anywhere. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. Threads, Twitter, YouTube, all that stuff. But if you want to make it easier, it's just MikeCavagioni.com and all my links are there as well. Perfect. Love it. Um, Mike, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. It's our pleasure. And listeners, you know what to do. Be a bro and share this show. Bye. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.